Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a green lantern mask out of EVA foam. And it's another simple project just like the last video where I did Nightwing. And just like the last video, the there is a link below to the patterns on Facebook for free so you can all enjoy. Uh, part of the reason why I've been revisiting and making or I should say remaking some of my old videos essentially is because this is very simple and it's an updated version for anybody that likes it in all the comments I've gotten about the patterns etc so this is me kind of making up for that but also with all the stuff that's currently been going on worldwide uh, everybody's kind of affected by this uh, for example me I still have access to all the materials that I need to continue doing the videos that I planned on doing and the projects that I planned on doing however I no longer have employment and a good part of this channel is funded out of my own pocket from my paychecks and now I don't have one so I'm currently out looking for a job and hopefully we'll find one soon and once I do all the stuff that I had planned on doing I can continue to do until then I just basically have a bunch of EVA foam scraps but I can do small projects like this to hopefully at least kind of keep the channel going and keep me active so that I don't get depressed. So without rambling on any more about that, let's go ahead and just jump right into the video. Okay, so first you're going to need to cut out your pattern pieces after you trace them and make sure to add your registration marks. So now that that's done, you're going to need to cut them out. and. Uh, I did mark it, but it's an outward cut on this edge and this edge on each side of the number one. The top and bottom you can leave flat. On the number two, the outside of each is cut in an outward angle, and the bottom and these top two cuts are flat. And on the number three, this one is once again an outward angle. Everything else you can cut flat, except for this top area with the two registration marks. It is an inward angle. And then all the edges here on the 4, you can cut flat, and on the 5. However, the inside, where the registration marks are, cut at an angle inwards, so that when you join them together, it will make sort of like a brow shape. And now I'm going to take some DAP Weldwood contact cement, and I'm going to start applying it to the edges to be bonded, except for the number 1, we're going to set that off to the side now. But all these other edges to be bonded, I'm going to go ahead and brush that on. And how contact cement works is you apply it to each surface. You allow it to sit for 15 minutes until it's no longer tacky. And then you join the two sides together. Okay, now that I've allowed this to sit for 15 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and start to glue the pieces together by simply joining them. However, I want to point out, if you haven't used uh, contact cement before and you're not super familiar with how it works, once you stick these pieces together, what's going to happen is they're going to immediately bond. So you can't really adjust them or move them. You need to do it one and done right the first time uh, you usually can't really get it apart unless you either tear it or cut it apart so try to make sure you have everything lined up and go slow and be careful and put it all together as evenly as possible
Okay, so the only thing, of course, that is now missing is the center nose piece. However, before I just glue it in, I'm going to actually have to preheat shape this. I'm going to have to heat it so it curves this way, and I'm also going to pull and stretch on it as I do it. And I will, of course, put that on film as well. I am using a dual setting heat gun for this, and I'm going to use it on the high setting. And I usually let it warm up a little bit and then put it to the project and start working and shaping it. Okay, now I'm going to continue heating and shaping the mask, starting with the center right above the nose piece. Okay, and just for a quick side-by-side <clears throat> -side comparison, I started, of course, curving in the center, and then heating and helping to accentuate that uh, bend there, and then just curving this around a bit, and curving this too. Now, this is all still just pretty initial. I'm going to continue to heat and shape this uh, to get a shape that I like, but I'm also going to periodically put it up against my face so that I can see how it fits. I finished the heat forming to even up both sides, and when you're doing this, if you haven't done this before, one thing is to keep in mind, try to get each side even. And as I'm heating it and curving these pieces, I'm pushing them in at the same time, uh, partially because the heat gun can cause the seams to want to pull apart a little bit, and also just because it's to tighten up where the spots where you've glued and get all this in together better. And like these pieces I curved here, like, you know, the nostrils on your nose, and the side pieces I just curved to fit up against my face. And yeah, just, you know, don't struggle against the pattern. And the way everything is glued together, work with the pattern and the way everything is glued together to bring out the best shape possible. All right, so now I'm going to use my Dremel 4000 rotary tool with a medium sanding head to go ahead and sand all the seams and stuff on this and try to smooth everything out and round out the edges.
Okay, I finished sanding everything, rounding out the edges, sanding up the seams, and also even rounded these out a bit on the eyes and on the inside, just sanded them down a little bit smoother so it's more comfortable whenever it's on my face. Now that all that is done, I'm going to take some super glue and just begin to put a little bit of it along where all my contact cement seams are. I wait, of course, until I'm done with all my heat forming, just because the super glue, whenever it finishes its chemical reaction and it does its whole bonding thing as the oxygen hits it, it essentially creates a chemical burn that makes the seam very stiff and hard to heat shape, which is why I use uh, contact cement for all of the seams because when you heat them, the contact cement is pretty pliable and flexible, whereas super glue tends to not be. But once you have everything done, then it doesn't so much matter. In fact, putting this on your seams and giving you a little bit more rigidity never hurts. It's just gonna make the mask hold its shape better and last longer and be more of a functional thing. Okay, now that I've given about an hour for the super glue I put on to dry and help make this a little more stiff and make sure the seams don't come apart at all, I'm going to take some DAP uh, Clear Alex Plus, which is an all purpose acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. Uh, since it's acrylic, you can use water in your finger to smooth it out just like you would with, say, clay pottery or something like that. And I don't leave mine in the tube. I cut the tip off, squeeze it all out, and put it into a Tupperware. And the Tupperware, I always keep saran wrap on so that it stays uh, workable and doesn't get hard on top or get a skin on it. It stays, it also saves money because I don't lose any. I'm not constantly, you know, having to buy a new tube because the other tube dried up or whatever. And I'm going to go ahead and put this over the seams and some of the areas just to try to hide. The, the, the seam and the glue marks as best as possible before I seal it and paint it. Okay, uh, I didn't put on any more than one layer. It was just enough to smooth out and fill in any of the gaps. And even the gaps I had were pretty small, like over here where these three come together. There's a tiny gap, but it wasn't very big. So I just wanted to put a little bit in there and fill that in. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some Mod Podge and a brush and seal all this in. finished sealing it I actually applied two layers total uh, all going from left to right pretty much following the lines in the mask and now I'm going to primer this gray uh, before painting it green and the primer phase will help me see if there's you know, any more little spots that I want to touch up with the DAP Alex Plus okay so I did go ahead and do my gray primer and I did not film it I just brush painted this on but
The white here is once again more of the DAP Alex Plus because there was a couple areas that I just didn't like the way they looked. And like I say, it was kind of hard to tell since the DAP does dry clear. Uh, but once I painted it uh, all that same color gray, I could definitely see where it needed a little bit of improvement and filling. So I'm going to let this dry and then apply uh, gray over it again and just touch it up. Okay, I finished painting this up just using some opaque uh, green from testers and now I might as well go ahead and throw some elastic on this and try it on and see how it fits. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll still be able to get a couple videos out a month, despite everything that's going on. And I hope all of you out there do stay safe and be careful. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great day.